Hello, all you wonderful fools. It's time for the Mr. T Show. Here we go, let's start the show. No stick by Mr. T. Nintendo video games, all the favorite ones for me. News and reviews, some gameplay too. Battle and drones is what I do. Who is it? Is it I am just the show by Mr. T? It's the show by Mr. T. Hey there, fools. Big T here, back with another video, and this one is a very peculiar one. Uh, when I was doing my research for the Wii and the GameCube videos uh, that I put up as of late, um, I came across, you know, tons of footage from stuff from forever ago. Obviously, I showed uh, GameCube launch stuff uh, with uh, Miyamoto and Bill Trennan. Uh, with the uh, Luigi's Mansion stuff and I just came across a ton of different types of videos uh, around the GameCube and I ended, ended up actually coming to an extended play video from back in the day now extended play uh, was this show uh, about video games um, one of the earliest shows that at least I remember um, outside of like the game show stuff that you saw on Nickelodeon back in the early 90s uh, extended play you know they talked about video games and it was where Adam Sessler got his claim to fame and extended play the original show was on um, tech TV uh, back in the day and Adam Sessler would run around when his crazy 90s looking shirts <laughs> you know colorful shirts and weird kind of hair yeah back when he had hair <laughs> you know just kind of hang out and like um, uh, arcades and whatnot and ask you know kids questions and talk about video games and it was just a, a innocent show and it was a fun show that I uh, caught wind of and started watching and then uh, obviously G4 and Tech TV uh, merged and uh, extended play became X play with Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb and <laughs> the rest is history on that but basically uh, Adam Sessler on extended play back when it was still on Tech TV uh, had this kind of uh, GameCube video uh, basically around the GameCube's launch and uh, so I ended up coming across that and you know I was kind of watching it and I saw this one kid that caught my eye and I was like I know this kid who is this kid and I was like is he an actor or you know who is this kid and I, he looked a lot like uh, uh, what's his name Nick Lovin <laughs> from uh, Superbad I can't remember his name right now He's been in a ton of stuff, but um, and I was like, well, maybe he's an actor, and then he just looks like somebody I know. Um, and then, you know, out of the blue, it clicked with me. But before we get to that, uh, this kid is in this uh, uh, extended play video, and he's talking about, you know, the GameCube and how he feels about, it. you know, this is like impressions and stuff. And you know, he's just introduced as Corey. Uh, he doesn't have a title or anything. He doesn't work for Nintendo or anything like that. There's a bunch of kids and some adults uh, being interviewed about the GameCube and how they felt about it. And uh, he was one of them. And apparently, he was also uh, in this contest. What would you do for a GameCube? Nintendo saw fit to ask just that in an online contest last month and they brought five finalists to the San Francisco Cube Club to see just what they were willing to do. Meet Lizzie, Jeff, Matthew, Jason and Jennifer, and Corey. Spam, cat food, and chocolate syrup into the size of a GameCube, and I'm gonna eat the whole thing. I'm going to be uh, juggling Nintendo consoles while dressed up as Mario, as you can see, and whistling the Super Mario theme. It's pretty wacky, so. I'm gonna paint the GameCube logo on a tapestry with my tongue using uh, various condiments. I'm dressed um, not in full costume, but I'm dressed as Mario, so. Prin yeah, Princess Peach. Hmm, that's kind of a lame stunt. He must have a trick up his sleeve. I am going to become the first human Pikmin by uh, shaving my head because Pikmin don't have hair. I'm going to paint my entire body blue to be the blue Pikmin. And then I'm going to eat bugs because like, this is a game based in a garden and there are lots of bugs roaming around. So I figured I'd eat some, yes. As the contest wore on, it became clear that Matthew was risking a sprained tongue. Jeff really needed a little more practice. Lizzie bit off more than she could chew, 
Jason did have something up his sleeve. Jennifer, will you marry me? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> yeah! And Corey rapidly developed a taste for creepy, crawly things. While all five finalists walked away with the GameCube, Corey was awarded the grand prize. And I know Mr. Miyamoto would be very proud. <laughs> Who says good things don't happen to crazy people? As you can see, he... Corey, this kid Corey, basically painted himself blue and, and like ate bugs and stuff, did all this weird stuff, and ended up winning the contest. And I'm like, who is this kid? And then, like I said, out of the blue, <laughs> blue Pikmin, um, I remembered who this kid was, and I was like, I interviewed this guy. Um, and so I went and looked at my PAX uh, East footage. <laughs> Uh, I went to PAX East a few years in a row, and uh... So my name's Corey from Nintendo. Lo and behold, I found Corey. <laughs> and Corey apparently now works for Nintendo. And he was at the time, uh, you know, uh, I interviewed him at the time for Codename Steam, uh, which is one of my favorite 3DS games that basically bombed likely because of it came around came out around the same time as uh, Majora's Mask 3D. I think that's part of the reason it bombed anyway. Probably a big part of the reason, but um, I interviewed him about that. He works for Nintendo and he was explaining Codename Steam. So yeah, you know, I got to thinking like, did <laughs> my, you know, my initial thought was, did Nintendo rig this contest for a kid that worked for them? And, um, you know, some people, always think the worst <laughs> when it comes to Nintendo there's a contingency of people who think the worst uh, when it comes to Nintendo even though they don't have a track record for certain things people always think the worst about them and uh, but basically you know I don't know what the details are I'd like to talk to Corey about it at some point maybe I'll see him at PAX East uh, next year and you know just if he has the time um, I'd like to ask him like did he end up working for Nintendo after that? Did they like him so much? The, they, he stood out so much to them because of the crazy blue Pikmin thing he did. Um, did he uh, end up, you know, just kind of staying in contact with them and ended up working for them and working for them and having a job for them with them till this day, which is pretty cool. You know, I think he's done treehouse stuff as well. Um, and he's definitely a guy that they put out during events and stuff like PAX East and um, stuff like that. So. I just thought it was really interesting and it's funny that I came upon this stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think Nintendo rigged <laughs> this contest so Corey would win? Um, I don't know if I said he won, but he did win um, the, the big prize. I think everybody ended up with a GameCube and stuff. I think he got some more stuff. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool that I came across this. It was pretty interesting. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, thank you as always for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out. Oh yeah, one more thing. Play Nintendo fools. <laughs>